gonna start with this disclaimer. This episode is gonna be a little bit hmm, odd, a little macabre. So if you're not a person who likes to hear about strange and disgusting things, I, I would not recommend this episode for you. Mm. Damien is looking very confused because this one is kind of a surprise for him. So I'm, mm. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've been doing a lot of research because I just like to look into stuff like this anyway. And I'm like, hey, let's bring it on the podcast. Let's do it. And have an open mind. OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all going to come together. Um, so the domestication of dogs began in Siberia 26,000 years ago. Wow. And what's interesting about Lyric is that she's so primal mm -hmm. and her lineage is from Siberia. Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. Okay, so I can't go that direction. You can't. You can't link that. But I hear what you're saying. I don't know. I always get Serbia and Siberia mixed up. Don't judge me. I told you. Look, look, look. Don't look at me like that. C P S S. What does that mean? C P S S. Don't talk about me because. Um, <laughs> Of my, my rough inner city upbringing. Shut up. C-P-S-S. -S. I got a master's degree. Okay. I, I, I smart. Exactly. Anyway. Okay. But regardless, it did begin in Siberia 26,000 years ago, okay. which was just news to me. I didn't realize that it was something that had been around for so long. Um but in doing my research, that's what I found out. I got that lovely fact from Wikipedia. But um, how do you think that dogs became domesticated? Or where did dogs come from, if, if that makes a little more sense? The domesticated dog. Mm. Okay, let, let, let's, let's, pull a, let's walk it back a little bit. If you were... Living in, I don't know, this is prehistoric Damien. Mm -hmm. And you're running around and you're, I don't know, where would you 26, be? 26,000 years ago? Yeah. What Just would, imagine. Anywhere 26,000. you um, are trying to make it in life and you, want, you, you need an animal. Primitive tools and hunting equipment and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah you need an animal to, to help gather your food and help you eat. And that, in oh. that process... That per that dog that's helping you survive is going to be your best friend. But how would you go about creating that animal, like getting that to happen? Mm. Like, what would be the first step? I would share my food with him. Okay. First with, step with who? With the dog. Well, there's no dogs. This is. Oh, how would I create a dog? How would you create the dog? Like, what what do you think the steps would be? Uh. How would it start? Probably a. A wolf. Okay, right, correct. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, they started with wolves. Uh huh. And <sighs> something else rough, like, but a little bit more. Um, walk on. I don't. Uh, well, okay, maybe that's, that's just too tough. Yeah, because when I was reading this wikipedia article i was like okay that makes sense so what they said is that the closest relative to the the domesticated dog is the wild gray wolf and the theory is that domestication started by uh, with the gradual taming uh, with the gradual taming of less aggressive wolves so what i was trying to get you to say is you would the strongest wolf and then made it with like not the strongest because you got it to kill you no nah, but i'm saying you you mate the strongest wolf with maybe like the most weakest and try to get a middle of a row of, um puppies or you just lure the less aggressive wolves to you by doing things like feeding them and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that 
and you breed those dogs. That's true. And yeah. then they become, you know, you are selectively choosing that like friendly, playful personality and creating your dog from there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's just so interesting. So interesting. They have dog skeletons buried with bodies. They said dated 33,000 years ago. So I don't understand how it's. The domestication started 26,000 years ago, but they're saying dog skeletons are found in the Altai Mountains of Siberia in a cave in Belgium dated 33,000 years ago. The oldest known dog skeletons. Oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. They weren't buried with their owners. But yeah, it's been a thing. It's been a thing. I know on one of our episodes, we were discussing how much, when well, probably not one of them, several, we've expressed our disdain for Zeus. Yeah. And um, I've actually had people challenge me on that. Like, well, you have dogs and dogs aren't. Why do you have animals? Well, dogs have been domesticated for 26,000 years. Exactly. Exactly. And they, and they like it here. That's funny. I sent you a video today of Dobermans you, talking about what dogs, what made up a dog. So what makes up Dobermans, they say, you know, one of the dogs that makes up Dobermans, there's like five or six, you know, but the ones that are sticking in my mind are, um, is Rottweilers. Mm -hmm. Took a combination of Rottweiler, Rottweilers, um, Great Danes, and with some other. That Those two definitely make greyhounds. sense. That makes sense. And it's like pointer dog, whatever the ones that point mm. the pointers or whatever. Okay. It was, it, it was one, it was, and then a couple others, but the video I sent you today was of this Rottweiler and they were talking about the Rottweilers, how they are. And some of the looks, some of the, you know, cutting their eyes, the, and expressions. Up, the expressions on their face. It's very similar to Bishop and Jaden. Wow. Very similar to Lyric. Very similar to all three of them. When I look at them, I feel like their expression, expressions are like deer. They remind me of like a, a deer or an antelope or something like that. I just don't like sometimes how smart they are because <laughs> I'm sitting there talking, telling y'all about the bee today before we started recording. And I look over and Jada is giving me a side eye like she knew I was talking about her. Oh, she knows. Cause, because we talk to them. We actually have conversations. We talk at them. It's plenty of times I'm just like talking and talking and they're just looking at me. And, and they're definitely picking up something. That's crazy. So. And then their eyes are I don't know. This is different. Them hazel eyes and Bishop and Jada. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. And then she give you that side eye and then she got these big pupils and it's just. It could be scary. Could be intimidating yeah. to people who don't know her. Right. But she's super sweet. But she, she, she just has a, a short fuse for this mess. Just, she wants peace and quiet and she wants to be left alone until she don't want to be left alone. Mm hmm. And she don't like to be messed with. She don't like to joke around. Mm -hmm. There's no play with. No, she doesn't play. With Jada. She she's never a very mature woman. She's always acted like she's been here before. She has. You're right. She was never playful. She no, wasn't no. even a playful puppy. She was just kind of like a puppy. Rough. Wrestling. She always used to wrestle Bishop. Bishop. But like when it came to us, she was just. No. Nah. I don't even really remember very well now that I'm thinking back on it. She was just. um. That was four years ago. Right. She she was she was um more active. Then Bishop. Bishop was always kind of like chill, you know. Mm, oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. She was always kind of moving around and kind of always busy doing something. And she was the one that was, I can't remember if she chewed up anything. Or she anything. used to chew up stuff. Remember, stuff. she used to always grab tissue. Oh, yeah. Always be eating oh, tissue. Yeah. We paper had plates. that paper plates. We had that short garbage can. She was always in that gar garbage can. And smart. Yeah. And she then would sneak off. Oh, and you would go to her cage and, and there's like, 15 items that she's took in there right yeah that you didn't even see that her she got had throughout no the day. ketchup packets um chick-fil-a you know, sweet and sours um cups cups forks yeah, obviously she got through some a couple chicken bones mm -hmm. you know you see the container now, with the bones the bones are gone the containers half eaten <laughs> she's a lot better now and then she would hide it with her blanket yeah. So you didn't even see it. Then you clean your cage out. You see all, find all this stuff in there. Yeah, she was pretty sophisticated with that. So if we were 
to die in the house. Ew. And no one knew that we were dead. So we were laying here for days. Which of the dogs would you say is most likely to eat us? Ugh. I- <laughs> and Yummy, you could come too. So we're laying here for days. We're di- we're dead. The and dogs are starving. Knows. We're not saying they're terrible um, creatures. They're just very, very hungry. Nobody knows. We're in the house. We're dead. It's been days. They haven't eaten. Which dog will either... Okay, let's let's put it this way. Which dog would be the first to start eating us? This one. Yeah, I'll say Lyric. What'd you say, Yummy? So our daughter is here, and she said Lyric as well. She don't use her voice. She just points. <laughs> so she's pointing at Our uh, 17-year-old daughter. But um, I would tend to agree. She's a little bit more... Um, Hungry. Hung- yeah, that... <laughs> Um, she just, I don't know. She's just a little bit more rough around the edges. She just is a little bit more, um, I can't think of the word. Primal. Primal. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely more primal than the others. You know, Bishop. I don't know that Bishop would eat us at all. Mm -mm. I think that maybe Bishop would just starve to death. I think Jada would eat us too. I don't think Bishop or Jada would eat us. I think she would, she would probably be the dog that would live. For real, I don't think they would eat us because they just don't, they don't know how to really eat like flesh. Like you ever give them like a big piece of meat or something like a little bit bigger. They don't know how to chew it down and break it down. It takes them forever to break some stuff down. Who she, is Jada and, Jada and Bishop. Bishop. Uh, but Lyric will handle whatever quick. Her teeth are a little bit bigger. Her mouth, her bite is a little bit stronger. Um, I can't believe we're talking about this. Um <laughs> <laughs> and she just knows how to she knows how to break stuff down you yeah know? where bishop and jada they don't really have a bite like that but i think if they were hungry enough they would follow lyrics lead hmm. with jada coming in second and bishop maybe starving to death but maybe deciding at the last minute okay i guess i gotta eat you and he'll probably <laughs> and he will probably do something like try to eat like our foot or just something that's just no lyric would probably have to break it down for him and he'd have to eat the no i think lyric would just eat our like devour our faces mm. i do i think that she would just go in and she would love us and be sad probably as sad as a dog can be but um, i do think that she would eat us so everyone knows i'm a huge fan of national geographic and an edition entitled Gory Details, Shocking Science Mysteries Explained, um, they talk about that, about dogs eating their owners. And I read this on the bus on the way to a work retreat, and I was like, man, this is amazing. So I'm, I'm going to read it. So the title of this article is It's a Dog Eat Owner World. Um, from the Nat Geo Gory Detailed Edition. Sea creatures aren't the only ones that eat carcasses. Our pets do too. Most animal scavenging documented in the forensic science literature involves dogs. There are relatively few published accounts of cats eating their owners. Though there aren't many official counts of our beloved pets eating corpses, A 2016 study in the Journal of Veterinary Behavior observed canine savaging in indoor settings is rarely reported, but is regularly observed in forensic practice. Experts confirm this. Joseph Prollo, a medical examiner in Michigan, says he sees evidence of pet predation on a corpse during an autopsy at least a couple times a year. Usually, he says... Dogs, rather than cats, have done the scavenging. Usually, he says, dogs, rather than cats, have done the scavenging, and both animals generally go for the face first. That might happen when the pet tries to wake up its owner and taste blood, which can lead to a morbid outcome. All of the noise in the background was my 
husband, Damien, over here tussling with um, Lyric with this toy. But did you hear? Yes. David? Okay. That's wild, right? Mm-hmm. And I asked Chat too. Chat GPT and Chat GPT was like, dogs don't do that. It's a myth. But. National Geographic. Yes. Says that they eat faces. Exactly. Exactly. And this is from a very smart woman. Um, Erica Engelhopt, H A U P T is her last name. Engelhopt. Let's see. That would make sense, though. I mean, I feel like they would eat faces, extremities first. Mm hmm. Break you, you know, because you got your nose, you got your lips. You can, you know. It just seems like it'd be easy, huh? Mm-hmm. Rather than digging into the body. So, no, it's, it's, it's not surprising. That is wild. Uh, this episode is a little bit too gory. Well, that's just, you know, that's not even a lot. That's not a lot to it's, talk about. It's not. People's faces. No, no, no. I have even more for you if you want to get really gory. Ugh, go ahead. So this isn't about dog behavior, but this was also in this Nat Geo edition. And um, it's pretty fascinating. So one of the articles was about head transplants, which I had to read it because I'm like, head transplants, why would somebody want a head transplant? But as soon as I read it, it's like, duh. Uh, uh, There are plenty of reasons that a person would want a head transplant. Or really, it's not a head transplant, it's a body transplant. So there are like plenty of conditions where people just lose control of their bodies or their body becomes very diseased or they have an, uh, an injury or accident or something um, and, and they're paralyzed, which was the case of the person featured in the article who was thinking about doing a body transplant. But in describing that, which, which it sounds like it's something that's a real possibility, It could happen. It sounds like something that actually could happen at some point. Um, There's research being done as we speak, probably, of people trying to figure out how to do it. And, yeah, it will change a lot of people's lives. But they were, of course, discussing the the controversy behind it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the critics are like, well, people will go crazy. If you have, if your head is put on a corpse's body, inevitably you'll lose your mind or something. Which, because I guess because it's so weird. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there would definitely be an adjustment. (laughs) It would, wouldn't it? But I think eventually you'll get used to it, right? Well, like, Yeah, or kill yourself, one of the two. <laughs> oh, God. For real. I mean, because, like, what if you put... <laughs> it's crazy. But, like, if you was, you know, a black man's head put on a white man's <laughs> body or something. <laughs> just tan. Just tan the body. And then you, you get can't skin tan cancer. it enough. And then it's going to be your... I don't know, you... You got your hair that you know what I'm saying you got a little taper fro on your on your head, but then you got you know white man chest hairs growing out. This is be weird. I don't know. But at least you would have a body. Yeah. But it would be very. I'm I'm not yeah doubting. The aliens would be confused. Like, yeah. What's wrong with him? And then like dating would be interesting, especially in a scenario you you have a black head and a white body or oh, yeah. or vice versa. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I wonder what if a white man had a black man's body and he tried to be with someone who was racist would they (laughs) (laughs) how would that work like (laughs) or his girlfriend was racist (laughs) so like would she need to break up with him or is the fact that his head I'm laughing at the confusion the first time that she would realize that something wasn't right That'd be hilarious. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's all like, "Wait, no, let me explain." Right, you know, like the first time they they 
they dating, they come on, they have a good evening, they have a little nightcap, if you know what I'm talking about. The lights are off. You know what I mean? And this white man is <laughs> handling oh his God. business. And she's like, that's never happened to me before. <laughs> oh, my God. Comfortable and she's brushing his teeth that he comes in to take a piss or something and whips out. She's like, What the <laughs> right? She bolts out the house, like, uh uh-uh. uh, yeah, feeling completely deflowered or tainted, just confused, by the confusion, the black penis <laughs> from her white man head. I don't know that, oh my God. but that's crazy. But I mean, it could really a lot of people could be helped by something like that. But um, so what I was going to say is that a lot of the research that has gone into figuring out how to do body transplants has been conducted on dogs. Oh, wow. That's wild. Right now, I don't like the idea of that animal testing. However, that's just what it just is. I'm not. You know how you know how. I mean, to be able to do that on a human or a dog or whatever, do you know how tedious the one little blood vessel or one little vein that's not connected correctly and it I probably wouldn't work? Or right. Something would be crazy. Oh, yeah. It would have to be. Well, really, it's about connecting the spine properly. And if you can wire it all together and get it on there before the head dies or the body dies, the brain dies or the body. I guess that okay, would- but you all right. But to my point, you have to continue providing oxygen to the brain, right? So there would have to be some type of oxygen pumped into the brain yep. on mm-hmm. a consistent basis. And then the transition, they may have to do one blood vessel at a time to continue well no it wouldn't work like that because the head is on a person their body is just not working right so you would this is this is a way whoa, 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 whoa. you're talking about okay back up so you're talking about i thought you meant dog and dog you're talking about oh. a human head on a dog no no body. no I'm sorry. we were talking about dogs now oh my god <laughs> no <laughs> but i mean i think that the rules were, would apply either way like it would be a living dog Two two dogs, no, maybe a body, right, that's being kept alive on machines, and then a dog that has its full body, and you would set it up on the headless one, like you would get, you would prep that body, mm-hmm. and then you would quickly cut off the head of the other dog, put it on the one dog, like connect it really quickly so that it lives. And like once everything comes together, like like plugging in a a lamp or something. The fact that they're doing research on this lets me know why there's so many UFO sightings because they're down here to save us from ourselves. Because if we're doing this, like yeah, look at this picture. So <laughs> this is wild. This is what caught my eye right here. They're doing way too much research. Oh hell no. Nah. So describe what you're seeing. So this is what a German Shepherd. Full body German Shepherd with the head. And it looks like a, I can't even tell what type of dog this is, but it's a it's a younger a, a puppy almost that is growing out the side that they have connected to the side of the German Shepherd's neck. A little white dog. A little white dog. And it's like just the head and the legs. Yeah, and this is a real picture. This is an actual photograph. And the doctor's in the background observing this, and it looks like they're both alive. Yeah. So let me get into the article, which will explain this photograph. I'll read it. Go ahead. (laughs) That's crazy, right? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, Okay, it says... In 1908, Charles Guthrie grafted a dog's head to another's neck, attaching arteries so that blood flowed first to the decapitated head, then the original head. 
The transplanted head was without blood flow for about 20 minutes and regained only minimal movement. That was in 1908. Mm. 1908? Mm-hmm. Wow. Then, in the 1950s, a doctor whose last name I can't pronounce, first name Vladimir, last name D-E-M-I-K-H-O-V, um, a pioneer in human heart and lung transplants, grafted the upper bodies of young dogs onto the shoulders of other dogs, creating dogs with two heads, both able to see, move, and even lap up water. Without drugs to prevent rejection by the immune system, most lived only a few days. But they lived a few days. And that's in 1950. Mm. Then... The plot thickens. In 1965, Robert White of Cleveland Metropolitan General Hospital transplanted the brains of six dogs into the necks of. (laughs) No, sorry. Why? That's the picture. Into the necks, six dogs, though, into the necks of other dogs to show that the brains could be kept alive in another body. I think this picture is the one from 19. Did they have cameras in 1908? <laughs> that No, that picture looked like the 1950. It didn't look like 1908. Okay, this is 1965. Okay, yeah, I can believe that. The brain showed EEG activity and took up oxygen and glucose. Yeah. Wow. And then they went on in 1970 to transplant the entire head of a monkey onto another monkey's body. The same guy, um, Dr. White of Cleveland. The monkey lived for several days. Hmm. And then in 2017, at the Harbin Medical University in China, a surgery which took 18 hours was a practice run to work out logistics of the procedure in living bodies. This rehearsal confirmed the surgical feasibility of a human head transplant and further validated the surgical plan they reported. Wow. So, yeah. Well, I know one thing. I'm not signing my dogs up to have a head growing out there. You know how crazy that would be? Oh, no. And they're running around. They both got, uh uh-uh, no. And the one growing out the side of the neck has no control. None. It's just sitting there on top of the, on the back. They do long for the ride. Yeah. I wonder if they get mad, if they, like, well, they weren't alive for very long, but I wonder if they argue. Because, like, (laughs) think about it. Imagine somebody transplanting. I a think dog they're all on, in shock. How long do they live? On Jada's back. How long? How live? mad she would be the whole time. So did both dogs die or just the one that was I think they up? both died. How long did they live? Um, So 20 minutes in 1908. And then in the 1950s, the ones who could move, see, and even lap up water lived a few days. Oh, wow. And then in 1965... They really got to work together as a team to be able to drink out of a bowl. You know, one has to drink first, and the other one has to move to the left and bow, you know, and drop down and let them. Want. That's crazy. That's really crazy. But in 1965, that's when they transplanted the brains of six dogs into the necks of other dogs. It doesn't say how long they stayed alive. Mm. That's crazy. That's wild. That's like. But as I was saying. Mm. Jada, with her personality, if she went to sleep and woke up with a dog attached. <laughs> She'd be running around here acting crazy like she did today, but 10 times as worse. All she She'd got. She'd be just was, running, trying to, t- trying to get, if she ran fast enough, she'd probably shake it off or something. Right. You know? <laughs> right. But the way she reacted just by getting stung by a bee, mm-hmm. if she woke up with a whole dog attached to her, first of all, she likes her personal space. Right. Second of all, she don't really F with people like that. Right. Or dogs like that. 
That would be a catastrophe. And then she has the craziest side eye. She she be side eye in the head like <laughs> she would side eye the head. You know, eyes all big. She probably start growling and shit. Oh boy, Mm-mm. that's hilarious. Where are we buying these magazines at? Where do you get this at? I just find these at Publix or any of your local grocery stores. That's wild. But check it out, everyone. It's called Gore Details, Shocking Science Mysteries Explained. And um, it's National Geographic, and it came out 12-15-23. Well, it says display until 12-15-23. But yeah, um, interesting stuff, huh? That is crazy. 